Hello everyone and welcome. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at scanning in line art um, and getting it ready for uh, for colours and getting it ready for uh, uh, for colouring in in Photoshop. Um, so let's begin. To start with, we've got um, we've got the scanning uh, software open. This will obviously uh, differ for everyone's uh, everyone's scan as well. Take through a few few of the basics that uh, um, in the way that I scan in. We've got it set up. Um, obviously, the size will, will be dependent on your your image. I'm using an A3 picture here um, and resolution here. Um, I normally scan at either 300 or 600 DPI. Uh, most of the stuff we're doing is uh, is going to be designed for print, so that's uh, that's what you want to do. Um, if you're only uh, scanning in for uh, web based pictures you can scan it at 72 uh, uh, dpi which will obviously drastically reduce your file size um, but for most purposes 300 dpi um, is is perfectly adequate um, if a settings are um that I've got here. Um, I normally uh, scan in in a bitmap uh, file rather than a JPEG. A uh, JPEG will add a certain amount of compression, so it'll, um, it will reduce the quality of your image. Whereas at least scanning in, in, in as a as a bitmap will keep uh, keep all the original uh, content there from the from the scan. Obviously, once you've um, once you've scanned in and we've done our work with the the bitmap, then you can you can delete that file so you don't have to uh, to keep it on your system if you are a bit, uh, slightly short of uh, of hard drive space. So uh, that's what we do and. Um Within the uh, within the settings that I've got, I, I don't get the scanner software to to do any um, any of the alterations to the to the to the image itself. Um, I, I like to be kind of in, in control of that within Photoshop. So um, any, any any options you've got, um, you'll notice my one here about brightness and contrast all set to zero. There's no no color enhancements or anything like that. I turn all turn all that off. Um, so uh, rather than it, it trying to second second guess what the image is and and uh, trying to do some of, some of that, I prefer to do that in in Photoshop. And you'll see why in just a minute. Um, so it's obviously scan our scan our picture in. Um, and look, I've got one one here that's been scanned in. And um, this is a uh, obviously a turtle's picture that's uh, drawn by 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 Chris Imber. Um, you can see in the the, the picture itself, it's a um, it's an ink picture, um, but you'll see there's um, some of the original kind of like sketching in in here. This has been done in a in a blue pencil. Um, you, you might have noticed this before, people drawing in blue or or a red pencil. Um, and the reason for this is you can um, rather than a, a regular pencil, which would be uh, quite which would be very difficult to remove in Photoshop. Um, the blue or the red, we can basically just pick out that that um, that that color and we'll completely remove it from the picture, just leaving the uh, the, the ink line behind so that's obviously really beneficial I and mean, you don't have to do a lot of rubbing out afterwards which um, which sometimes obviously also uh, rubs out some of your ink or risks smudging it and things like that so and this is this is really uh, um, makes it a lot easier for us um, so what I normally do I've got this um, this image kind of like scanned in I normally then jump over to the uh, channels over I've got it set up over here um, and you'll notice I've got the RGB channel the the red the green and the blue if I just uh, just single out the blue color uh, blue channel by clicking on it you'll hopefully very quickly see in all of the uh, the image here all those all those blue lines all that blue sketching um, as, as disappeared you can see on the on the uh, on the whole thing there um, which I'll see that's that that's the real benefit of the of the, using a blue or red pencil obviously if you're, you're uh, if you if you've used a red pencil you would click on the uh, on the red channel um, instead and it would do exactly the same um, so what I would uh, then do here is uh, either press the control L button uh, or go up to the top here and do uh, image adjustments levels. It brings up this, this little dialog box here. So i zoom that for you. Um, and what I would do then is uh, is adjust these um, these sliders here. We've got the left hand slider which uh, adjusts the, uh, the 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 dark colours and the right hand slider uh, uh, changes the, the the whites. So uh, we'll adjust those to try and get a really clean uh, a clean scan here. So I'll zoom out so you can see what we're doing. Right. So the, the first one I normally do is the right hand side to get the whites right. And basically you're looking to drag this just far enough over that the 
that the background uh, paper turns white um, and you can use your ink dropper when you're on here just check that's the case uh, obviously you've got the, uh, the thing up here and you can see the kind of brightness is all the way up at zero saturation is um, so brightness of all the up at 100 and the saturation is at zero so that's exactly what we're what we're after um, and you, you try to do that as, as the minimum distance over to get to get a um, to make sure that paper is coming through as white so there we go um, and then move over the uh, the left hand side this this will change how dark your image uh, becomes and you can see that kind of like making a difference here this one's a bit more of a judgment call about how you want to how you want your image to appear you might want to keep a lot of these uh, these pen strokes in in here depending on how, you, how you're using it you might want to be a fully kind of solid black Im image uh, like, like this so it really depends on, on the style you're going for um, and this impacts even more if you if you're working with a with a pencil sketch and the the ink, ink sketch as well. Um, I'll, I'll show you that in a, in a in a little bit. For, for my purposes, I'm going to go somewhere in the in in the middle there. So we keep a bit of the texture of the of, of the of the of the brushwork there. So I'll click OK. Um, so that's great. What um, what I normally do now is to is to duplicate that channel uh, by right clicking and pressing duplicate. Zoom in on that for you. So right click and duplicate, and um, just blue copy is absolutely okay um, as the as the name for that. Um, I would then um, I'd then click on that channel uh, on the little uh, eye icon to to select that channel, um, and press Control and I or that'll be Command and I on the on the Mac. Uh, so do that, and that will that will inverse the channel. Don't worry about it. It looks a bit uh, looks a bit daft, but um, you'll you'll see why we do that in a minute. Um, so then just go go back and click on the uh, on the RGB channel at the top, and that will take your uh, your picture back to something like normal. It will look a bit strange, and um, probably a little bit of a, of a greenish tinge like I've got here. Don't worry about this. We've got all the information we need out of those channels now, so that's fine. Go back to your layers. Um, uh, uh, window there um, and click on the the new button to create a new layer um, now what we're going to do is fill that with uh, with our background color whatever we want the background to be for for this sake I'm just going to fill that in white you can see that funny there um, so we've got a white page now now I'm going to do another new layer on top and I'm going to go to the select at the top go to select um, and right down the bottom here we've got load selection so I'll go to that um, and you'll see it brings up this dialog box here um, and what we'll have now because uh, you'll see that channel option we've, we've got here if we pull the drop down uh, there we've got that blue copy that we've made so that's the one that we uh, that we want click OK and what you'll see um, is it loads a selection basically with all that all that line art in um, and all we need to do now is to fill that in black or, or alternative color if you if you so choose and there you go what we've got is the uh, is the line art here on a completely separate layer um, to our uh, to our background color here um, we can go ahead now and delete our, our back our layer that's called background which got our original scan in and we've just got those two layers here and then I would normally create a layer above there, above that to do my flats in, um, while locking both of these uh, li these layers, so we can't uh, we can't damage those. That's the basic kind of setup really um, of, of of doing the the, uh, the layers. Um, what what I would normally do to, uh, to to speed that process up is I've actually got a, an action set up. Um, so I would do all all the steps um, that you would do to um, to do the levels on the the blue, and then from that moment on, um, I, I basically just click one button, and it will do all that layer creation and fill, uh, filling in the, the background and filling in the uh, uh, the, the the black for the the, the, the pencil or the pencil or the ink lines. Uh, so I've got that. So just a, it's just a bit of a quick time saver. So I have got another uh, video on uh, on creating actions in Photoshop, which I'll link in the description. So um, that's that's it on. Um, uh, on on uh, kind of filling in that uh, fill, filling in the line art. Obviously, it's very very quick and very uh, very very easy. The benefits of this approach over say um, having um, not separating out, separating out the 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 line art from the actual uh, from the background and setting it to multiply um, is that we can very quickly go to the uh, create a new layer above. Let me just zoom on this for you. Uh, create a new layer above the the line art. Set this as uh, do create right click and do create clipping mask, 
And then with this layer, um, I can select a, a brush or the fill bucket and go go in. Um, these are turtles, so they may well have green skin, and we may want to very roughly uh, which is a bit of brush. Uh, that's a bit better. Um, yeah, we may want to go in and, and colour in the line art. Obviously, we do it a lot neater than this, um, but we might want to do something uh, something like that. Um, may want to just do it in the background so you can see it better. There you go. You can very quickly kind of like uh, do the uh, colour holds on the on the line art if you uh, if that's the uh, the style that you are going for, which is obviously uh, really kind of beneficial uh, to uh, to have that freedom to. Uh, to do that, um, so that's just one, yeah, one of the, the benefits of, do, of, uh, of taking that approach and not using the uh, the, the multi multiply approach to uh, to doing your your, um, your line art. So um, that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you do want to find uh, find out more, then uh, then please check us out at uh, recklesshero.com. Yeah, thanks very much. See you next time.